हेलो ऑल माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू आर वेल एंड यू आर एंजॉइंग ऑनलाइन सेशंस एंड ऑल दोज प्रेजेंटेशंस सो हियर आई हैव ब्रॉट पार्ट टू ऑफ चैप्टर फोर्टीन नेचुरल रिसोर्सेस क्लास नाइन साइंस बाय योर सोनाली टीचर आई होप यू विल एंजॉय दिस पार्ट टू व्हिच इज क्वाइट इन डिटेल you must have remembered that part 1 had included all the introductory points or all the introductory topics of this chapter about all those topics we will discuss in detail as per the exam point of view in this part let's start so here in my first slide you can see the resources on the earth now you can see the two figures in the first figure you can see lithosphere hydrosphere biosphere and atmosphere so lithosphere you can see which is like something like soil on which biosphere is entirely depended upon now bio that means something living so all the living things like trees animals insect they all are categorize under biosphere hydrosphere the word itself says hydro that means water so the level of water that comes under the hydrosphere and above all that comes under atmosphere which is air or something which is in the environment like uh, something which is above the lithosphere and the biosphere now in the second fig figure you can see the overlapping now second figure you can clearly say that the atmosphere hydrosphere and lithosphere in all this three sphere one common thing is biosphere now what does that this mean that means that all this layer has the living organism in them that means all three contain biosphere atmosphere you know the living organisms which are there in the atmosphere they are the micro organism which you can't see with the naked eyes but yes we are always present in the atmosphere lithosphere you can include the plants and animals as well as the human being and the hydrosphere you can include all the marine elements like fish underwater trees plants sharks whales crabs octopus etc etc so all this sphere what all three sphere has common in them is biosphere so this all come under the category of resources on the earth our earth is a huge resource that provide us with all this important elements so the natural resources of the earth are air water soil minerals in form of elements and living organism so the outer crust of the earth is lithosphere now here i can see four important definition in examination they can ask any of this definition or they can also ask the question that write a note on resources of earth so you will mention lithosphere which is the outer crust of the earth you will mention the water on the earth is hydrosphere you can also state that the layer of the air around the earth or the blanket around the earth is atmosphere and the living organism which are found in the atmosphere hydrosphere lithosphere interact with all individually or they are interconnected is called the biosphere so i am sure that you have understood which are the resources on the earth and the four major key word which are let's start with a a for atmosphere b b for biosphere then h h for hydrosphere and at last l for the lithosphere now i'll start with the atmosphere here now atmosphere is important key for all living organism because it is comprise of important gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide it do have other it does have other gases like nitrogen argon helium hydrogen but why i say that oxygen and carbon dioxide 
you know this because without oxygen no living organism can survive and without carbon dioxide no photosynthesis is possible and as an animal or as a human being we all are dependent on the photosynthesis because it is the ultimate process by which plants make their food now so air is a mixture of gases like nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide water vapor and other gases during respiration living organism use this oxygen to break down glucose and get energy for their activities you must remember class 7 in that we have studied about the digestion as well as the respiration now whatever food that you take is digested and stored in the form of glucose in your body which is further it's break down into the energy water and carbon dioxide with the help of oxygen so this process is called the respiration now this result in the release of carbon dioxide and also you know that burning of fuel also uses oxygen and in return they give us carbon dioxide so during photosynthesis green plants convert this carbon dioxide into the glucose in the presence of sunlight now this glucose is eaten by you which is further oxidized with the help of respiration into carbon dioxide water and energy so again this carbon dioxide is released in the air which is further taken by the plant now this process help to maintain the oxygen and carbon dioxide balance in the nature you can see in the image now you can see that the animals which during respiration release carbon dioxide that carbon dioxide is taken by the plant and in return plant is giving oxygen to that animal also you can see the industries which are releasing fuels and fossils they are releasing carbon dioxide which is taken by the plant in return the plant is giving oxygen which is required to burn that fossil or burn that fuel to release an energy you can also see the hydrosphere in which marine animals and plants they are interdependent upon the oxygen and carbon dioxide so atmosphere play an important role for sustaining the life on the earth because it is comprising of major two important gases and its balance which is oxygen and carbon dioxide now the role of atmosphere in the climate control now in summers you might be feeling so warm and hot at the same time you might feel very cold in your winters and during rainy seasons you don't feel much warm or cold but you feel quite moist in your surrounding so as the seasons are important so atmosphere play an important role for the climate control the atmosphere covers the earth like a blanket like we use blanket to cover our body similarly that is this atmosphere covers the earth air is a bad conductor of heat so it prevent the sudden increase in the temperature during day and slow down the escape of heat during the night what does this mean as air in our surrounding is not a good conductor of heat it will not get heat up so fast as you know that sun is quite hot and the energy what we get from sun is too much but at the same time air is not allowing that much of heat to pass to the atmosphere so we are able to maintain our body temperature and at night as the atmosphere gets so cool fast but air retain that warmth within that so we don't feel so cool at the night and so warm at the day so during day time we need to keep ourselves quite cool with the help of climate at the same time we maintain our warmth during night time so the atmosphere keeps the average temperature of the earth you know what is the temperature required by the body it is 37 degree celsius plus or minus 0.5 so earth and the surrounding atmosphere trying its best to keep the fairly steady temperature during the day and the throughout the year and so we can henceforth we can we can feel all kinds of seasons in our surrounding 
the third part is the movement of air in class 8 you have studied about the land breeze and the sea breeze now this land breeze and sea breeze that is mainly because of the temperature difference on the earth or you can say on the land and on the coastal areas like on the water because of this reason that wind keeps on moving and returning and so we don't feel too much cold or we don't feel too much warm so when air gets heated it rises up because it turns into the lighter density and produce low pressure so the cool air moves in to take that place so the movement of air causes wind and that is the reason that during day time near the coastal area we feel quite cool but at the same time during the night area at the coastal part we feel quite warm during the day land gets water and heated faster than the sea so the hot air above the land is rises up and this space is taken by the cool air from the sea move toward the land so this breeze is called the sea breeze during the night exact reverse happen that sea cools down slowly than the land so the hot air above the sea rises up and cool air from the land moves towards the sea area that means if during the night time you are sitting in a cruise in mid of the ocean that you might feel chilling cool during night time but at the same time during night time when you are sitting at the seashore you feel quite warm isn't it about the day day breeze and the you can see the sea breeze so this land breeze and sea breeze they are helping us for the random movement of air or you can say wind surrounding us now the fourth part is rain now here you can see the water cycle now this water cycle you have studied in your lower classes like class 5 class 6 i'll just quickly move with the low, uh, water cycle now here i can see the water with the help of sunlight this water starts evaporation now you know that what is evaporation now evaporation is something that liquid comes in the uh in the gaseous state that is known as evaporation so here with the help of solar energy water starts evaporating when it goes up it gets cooled down and it condenses back and form the clouds further with the change in the pressure this cloud starts raining and that process is called the precipitation so when it starts raining from the cloud that is from the gas again it converts into the liquid that is called the precipitation and even when snow on temperature change it starts melting so all this water again go back to the ocean or the ground water and recharge it back so this way the water cycle completes even you can see in this cycle that the plant they retain rain water and that also help to recharge the ground water so due to the water cycle that the level of water on the earth remain unchanged or you can say it is constant now when this water bodies are heated during the day time a large amount of water evaporates and rises up some water vapor also get into the atmosphere due to biological activities like transpiration now what is transpiration now transpiration you can also call it sweating now when plant release the water in the form of vapor it is called the transpiration when human release water in the atmosphere it is called the sweating so plant sweating is called the transpiration due to continuous transpiration plant suck the water which is there present in the underground and that will allow the movement of water throughout the plant so with the help of transpiration or biological activities like sweating this water gets vaporized and go in the atmosphere as the water vapor rises up it cools down and condenses to form the tiny droplets of water back this appears as the cloud you can see in the image when this tiny droplets of water join together to form the bigger drops of water 
they fall down as rain, rain, snow or the hail. So, these are the ways that water is remaining constant through the water cycle in the atmosphere. Now, let us talk about the air pollution. Air pollution word does not require any kind of introduction. You know what is all the air pollution? You know that certain countries which are highly polluted like in our country the Delhi is a state or it is a city which is highly polluted which is like having a smoke that is a mixture of fog as well as smoke. Even certain countries like US and uh, like you can say uh, China they are the countries which are facing the maximum air pollution due to their industrial activity as well as their other activities. Now, you know that due to this COVID-19 or coronavirus because of lockdown these days you might have seen certain pictures coming in the news which make sure which, which we have shown that that atmosphere has turned very clean and you can see the farthest things in the surroundings like you know that was the picture in the news that Himalayas were visible through the Uttarakhand or some parts of Jalandhar. So, is not it so nice that due to some reason or some other way if this activities or this industries get stopped. So, that may heal our air and we can maximize uh, this uh, we can maximum avoid this air pollution. Now, air pollution not only harm the environment it also harm the humans because they cause the respiratory infections and the diseases which makes the animal or human unable to breathe well and their average life that is of 60 to 70 years goes on decreasing to the 40 to 50 years. Their lungs get damaged badly. So, the increase in the content of harmful substance in the air is called the air pollution. In examination can be asked that write a note on air pollution and what are the preventive measures as a human or as a as a responsible citizen would you take to minimize the effect of air pollution. So, the fossil fuels like coal and petroleum which is containing small amount of nitrogen and sulphur on burning they produce the poisonous gas like sulphur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide. These fuels are burned it release oxides of sulphur and nitrogen as I said and this oxide dissolve in the rain and cause the acid rain. You have heard about the yellowing of Taj Mahal in Agra. It is a very beautiful monument and very precise and very precious monument in our India and the hot spot or you can say the famous tourist spot. In earlier years because of Mathura factories which are in surrounding they, they, they turn to uh, spread lot of air pollution and due to that the Taj Mahal started turning yellow and beauty of Taj become like they it was not like become so uh, so, uh, it was tempered you can say it was so in a bad condition that government had to take certain state and they stop all those Mathura factories which were in the surroundings. So, uh, initially we can make certain alternative of this using of this fossils. So, burning of fossil fuels also release this unburned carbon particles which re, uh, reduce visibility. You cannot see in uh, the surroundings, you cannot see in the air clearly. During cold weather along with this condensed water they form the smog. So, smog is nothing but the smoke which is unburned carbon plus fog which is called the moist, moist carbon. So, the regular breathing of this kind of air containing this harmful substance called the allergies, cancer and even the heart disease like stroke and the cardiac arrest. You can see the various cities shown here that Los Angeles very famous city of USA and the Beijing. You can see the what amount of smog is there. So, that is eventually going to harm us. Now, let us after atmosphere we will go to the hydrosphere and we will talk about the water. A uh, water a wonder liquid you cannot imagine your day or your life without water starting from brushing your teeth for the bathing for the cooking washing your clothes and utensils for gardening or the planting and for building your houses uh, sites roads this all requires the water 
and this water that we get is due to the water cycle balance but somehow there is an imbalance to the water cycle which may lead to a drought in certain areas and so the farmers cannot grow the crops for the need and even that animal cannot survive in those areas where the drought is faced so a large area of earth surface is covered with the water you know that 25% and 75% but that 75% is a salty water or the ocean water that is not the potable water so eventually we don't use that water so water is also found inside the earth as a ground water in the atmosphere as a water vapor so the water in seas and ocean is called the saline so salty water is known as saline so i can ask the question what is saline so salty water which is found in the seas and ocean is called the saline fresh water is found in the rivers lakes pond and as the ice and snow at the poles and the mountains and the cold regions you might have seen the pictures of himalayas or you might have visited the places near the snow area so there the water is in the solid state as hail or the snow now water is needed by the all living organism because all the life processes in the cellular activities need the water so the organism need water to survive we can't survive without water for a day so amount of water and other factors like temperature nature of soil decides the diversity of species and the number of individual each species in that area so i just discussed to you if there is a drought that area the species are going to get affected hugely if good amount of water is um, available so of course they will have the good varieties of animals and plant for that particular area now water pollution you already know and the disadvantages of water pollution that this factory waste with without treating or sewage is without treating they are sent to the flowing water and this all contaminants go to ground water and and they uh, pollute the the pure water and eventually that water is going to be used by humans or animals which may lead to any may lead to uh, n number of harmful effects on the living being so the increase in the content of harmful substance in the water is called the water pollution now water might look clear but if you check it or if you see under microscope there might be thousands of contaminants present over there which makes that water unfit for the drinking purpose so the water pollution is caused by adding a harmful substance like fertilizers pesticides from the farms sewage is from the towns and cities and factories and harmful chemicals from the factories this is causing microorganisms and changes in the amount of oxygen dissolved in the water or changes in the temperature of the water so you can say that that you you can highly say that that this all uh, contaminants where they are without thinking or without treating you just send it to the water or you just allow them to get mixed with the water they cause the water pollution and make that water unfit for the further use fourth element is soil now after atmosphere hydrosphere we have come to the lithosphere which is the soil so first let's talk how the formation of soil takes place so soil is formed by the breaking down of rocks on the surface of earth by the physical chemical and the biological process now physical that means some pressure may have caused chemical that means certain biological and other processes like some uh, chemical changes in that rocks or the mountains or the surroundings and the biological process that means that animals have uh, died over there plants have died over there and they have formed the most fertile part of the soil so this way the formation of soil takes place with the help of physical chemical and biological p c b changes p for physical c for chemical and b for biological processes and also the sun heats the rock during the day and this rock starts expanding at the night at rocks cool and contract this cause the rock to crack and break into the smaller smaller pieces water enters into this crack of rocks and when the water freezes it expand and cause crack in the rocks to widen and break into the smaller pieces so the flowing water carries the rock pieces 
this pieces rub against each other and become further smaller and smaller particles. So, again and again changes taking place in the atmosphere with the help of change in temperature. So, sometimes water is also entering the cracks, then it is freezing and then it starts expanding and that makes the rock particles to get break into the smaller and smaller particles. Now, strong winds also break the rocks into smaller, smaller particles. You imagine with the strong, uh, strong wind, a uh, mountain can even break with the, uh, with the years and years of pressure over there and carries it from one place to the another place. So, the roots of large tree grows into the cracks. They just go underground and they are growing in these cracks and in the rocks and break it into the smaller, smaller pieces. Lichens. Now, you know what is lichen. Lichen is the mixture of algae and fungus. They also grow on the rock and produce some substance which cause the rock surface to powder and become soil. So, you just saw that how many elements are working towards the breaking of the soil or you can say the making of the soil with the help of breaking rocks. So, even the water is working, wind is working, temperature is working and at the same time the living organisms like lichen, they are also working on the rocks to make them convert into the soil and soil particles. So, it is not a day task or a month ta task, but it takes a millions of years to produce this soil on which we are living right now. Now, composition of soil, you know that what all things are made up of, the soil is made up of, they are having uh, humus which is the very enriched fertile part. They have decayed organism, they have living organism like insects, they have uh, minerals like all elements, air, water, yes, soil do have air and that is the reason that they can hold more and more water and the amount of minerals, humus and the air, water are the main factor which decide the biodiversity of that area. Now, biodiversity, suppose a grassland, so you will find grass, deer, zebras, and lion. If you think of forest, you will find huge tall trees, you will find the wild animals, you will find the reptiles like snakes and anacondas and if I will think of a marine biodiversity, you might be thinking of the deep oceans, sharks, whales, octopus, etc. So, this availability of the soil decides the biodiversity. Suppose the soil is quite green or receive much amount of water that will turn into the forest biodiversity. If the soil is quite dry and which receives very less amount of water that will turn into the desert biodiversity. So, this way the soil composition takes place. Soil pollution. Now, as we discuss the air pollution, water pollution, here we will discuss the soil pollution. You know that any time you might have seen the people throwing the garbage or the plastic wrappers on the road. In previous years also you have studied about how the band on the plastic take place because this all ultimately leads to the soil pollution. You also know that the soil is the most important, uh, uh, most important abiotic factor on which all the living organisms are dependent upon. Now, when excessive use of fertilizers or excessive use of you can say the concrete or you, you just build uh, the tall buildings on the forest area or the, or, or the fertile area that will make that soil less fertile and ultimately that will result into the soil pollution. So, the addition of harmful substance which affect the fertility of soil and kills the diversity of that organism living in it called the soil pollution. So, it is not only about adding harmful substances, even with the man activity or human activity, if the biodiversity gets disturbed, that is also known as soil pollution. Soil pollution is caused by the excessive use of fertilizers and pesticides when farmers are not using them in a moderate conditions. It kills the organisms like earthworm and bacteria which make sure that soil is rich in the humus. And the removal of useful components and addition the other harmful substances reduces the fertility of soil and cause the soil pollution by even building, converting forest into cities will also affect the biodiversity and that way we add to the soil pollution. That is also called the soil erosion. 
because soil erosion is something that the upper part which is quite uh, rich with the nutrients you can see which is quite uh, fertile for the pharmacy, uh, farming uh, purposes or you can say for the agriculture purposes when that is removed with the human activity that is known as soil erosion. If sometime water is too much you can say the heavy rain due to global warming that will also lead to the soil erosion. So, what is the exact definition of soil erosion? The exact definition says the carrying away of soil from one place to the other by flowing water and wind is called the soil erosion or soil pollution. Large scale of deforestation also cause the soil erosion. When you are uh, involved in the deforestation, you are cutting down trees for your uh, benefits or human benefits for making hotels, resorts, for making cities, you are just converting the forest into cities that also leads to the soil erosion. Soil erosion can reduce or prevent it by a vegetative cover on the ground. You can again regain, you can again cover that uh, soil fertile and you can also regrow those plants and you can do this reforestation and avoid the soil erosion which is known as afforestation or reforestation construction of buds and the terraces dams etc now you can see this activity this way they can avoid the flood now you can see all these layers in this image isn't it so due to this uneven surface the water will not carry away the most important particles of soil and they will not wash off the soil and cause the soil erosion so these are the ways you know the you can see the different different layerings they have created soil into uneven part that will not allow to flow away or take away all the nutrients which are present in the soil now the biochemical cycles or biogeochemical cycles so this cycles includes water cycle carbon dioxide cycle nitrogen cycle oxygen cycle about all the cycles we will discuss in detail in our next presentation or next part which is part 3. So, we will discuss about all this cycle in detail. So, before I explain you part 3, I wish you just search about the cycles by your own, own in the search engines and you also start preparing notes for part 1 and part 2. I hope you have enjoyed the part 2 which is the second presentation which was the detailed presentation of all four layers which was atmosphere, lithosphere, biosphere and hydrosphere and also for the next slide you wait for our all biogeochemical cycles in detail. We will see you for the next presentation. Take care.